Today we're going to check out the Superbox S5 Max. This small box runs on Android and allows you to access live TV channels, video on demand and more with just your internet connection. But how does it work and does it work well? That's what we're going to find out after this message. The EaseUS disk copy software makes upgrading your storage drives faster and easier. Clone drives or migrate Windows installations to new ones with a simple and easy to use interface. This app supports disk, system and even partition cloning. Find out more with the link in the video description. IPTV boxes have been around for a while now and this is the latest and greatest from Superbox. The S5 Max comes with a remote that has voice control, no batteries included. The remote uses two AAA batteries. Also included is a HDMI cord, user guide, power supply and the box itself, which is mostly a metal alloy case. It's small, lightweight, it feels solid and premium. The Superbox S5 Max doesn't require a monthly fee. The only thing you need to buy is the box itself up front, which retails for around $359 US dollars. It's running Android 12 with a quad-core A53 ARM Cortex chip. Wi-Fi 6 is supported and the dual antennas give you great Wi-Fi coverage. Or you can use the Gigabit Ethernet port if you want to go wide for maximum reliability. The remote is plastic, but the buttons are rubber and have a nice clicky feel to them. All the usual suspects are here. You can even use the remote like a mouse if you prefer that way. Superbox claims the S5 Max can decode 6K H.265 video at 60fps, which is impressive, but I doubt there are many viewers with higher than 4K TVs at the moment or 6K content available. My TV and monitor max out at 4K, so I can't test the claim. I know, I know, I'm just a simple pleb, but I guess it's future proof. Although that would likely be 8K as that's the next logical step up. The front of the box has a clock. On the right side, there's a micro SD card reader, USB 3 and 2 port, and also a restore button. You can plug in extra storage, keyboard, mouse, controllers, or other devices here for various uses if you want to go beyond what's offered in the box. On the back, the power plugs into the DC port, but there's also IR, AV out for all the TVs, HDMI, Ethernet, and SPDIF audio, which is nice to see. It's a good set of options to fit most TVs and sound setups. Okay, so let's plug it in and see how it works. And the disclaimer says everything you need to know. After it boots up for the first time, there's a straightforward setup process of basically adding your Wi-Fi details or choosing wired internet and then making sure the display fills the screen correctly as some TVs use overscan, which I'm not going to get into in this video. Just fill it in until you have no black borders. On the main screen, you can pair the Bluetooth remote if you want to use voice commands. Just press the microphone button and follow the prompts. This way you won't need to point the remote at the box to make it work. Voice control works pretty well too. I don't use it personally, but it's quicker than typing on the remote if you don't have a Bluetooth keyboard like I use. Go to Live TV. To get the box up and running, head to the apps section and the app we need isn't showing. I think it takes some time to download it. So what I ended up doing first was updating the box, which went smoothly as there was an update available. And the App Store eventually showed up a bit later. The Google Play Store is also here if you want to download apps from it. You can grab your favorite streaming apps, video players, or whatever else. So the App Store we need to install is this one. Press OK on the icon and it'll be installed. Once it's done, head into it. And another disclaimer. You can select any app you like here, but the ones you'll be most interested in grabbing is the Video On Demand app, including movies and TV. The TV app. And playback gives you 85 channels you can play back for up to seven days if you missed out on watching something in the past week. 
Backup TV is useful if a channel you want to watch has technical issues on the Blue TV server. It's basically a backup server and should allow you to watch the live TV channel that is down on the Blue server. There's a bunch of other apps here. I'm not going to pretend I know what all of them are, but a quick Google search of each one will tell you what they do. Once that's done, you can add the blue apps to the main screen as shortcuts where the plus icons are, but I'll just put them in their categories. Press the back button after adding the app. Using the interface on the box is nice and smooth. There's no lag like you experience on some TVs that cheap out on the CPU. But for the asking price, well, you'd expect it. The Superbox S5 Max includes 4GB of RAM and 64GB of eMMC storage, which is plenty for the main usage case. It is an Android box, so you can also use it as a video player, browse the web, or even play games on it if you really wanted to. There's a lot an Android box can do, but the main function of this one is the streaming of TV and video on demand. Okay, so let's finish up with the pros and cons. This box has a high upfront price and doesn't require any future monthly payments. So depending on how much you watch, you could be saving money in the long run. The remote is nice and responsive, as is the Android OS. Setup is easy. Within a couple of minutes, you'll be up and running. There's a lot of content available, but it's very North American focused, so that limits the appeal overseas. The upfront cost of the box is high, and there's a lot of content on offer. If you're not from North America, you probably won't be too interested in the S5 Max. But for my North American viewers, I've linked it in the video description if you want to find out more. Are you interested in this box? Let me know in the comments. Cheers!